well. Also, Kendall Bryles officially, finally introduced as far as a graphic of Kendall and his family on a jet on their way, I'm sure, to Fort Worth. Welcome, Coach Kendall Bryles. He's the associate head coach. He's the offensive coordinator, and he's also the quarterback's coach. This graphic received a ton of play. Most of it appeared to be negative about the fact that they're almost trying to shield something here by putting the family in the front. I, I Everyone has their own opinion. Uh, obviously, this was the first time a day after he was announced as being hired as their coach to TCU. One of the things that's kind of bothered me about the discourse around Kendall Bryles um, is the lack of admittance by TCU fans that their school isn't perfect. No school is perfect. The I've read several different columns where there are people who write for, you know, they're, they're more fan columns, but, like, it's kind of the prevailing sentiment of they believe that their school, and this is, you can put this quote to any university. My university does it right. We don't let the bad guys play. We have discipline. We, you know, take care of business. We don't let these things get out of hand. You know, the other school, they do that. But my school doesn't. And let me just tell you that whether you're Baylor, TCU, USC, UCLA, like whatever rivalry you want to play or whatever school you want to say, like, oh, Michigan does it wrong, but Ohio State does it right. All of you've got your crap. Everybody has their crap. It all happens. It's human nature. You have these big, gigantic institutions. You have big football teams. You have people who are there. You have varying levels of discipline, varying levels of what coaches will let get by or put up with or get into the system. And so, to try to morally equivocate why yours is better than the other one, just there by the grace of God go you for the time that you're talking about. And at the time when Kendall Browse was at Baylor, that was when Gary Patterson was at TCU, and to what extent you believe he was doing it right, he had his problems as well. I mean, there was Kevontae Turpin and a situation that that guy's a pro bowler. I said he before the show is an all-pro. He's a pro bowler. Um, but... Uh, Kevontae Turpin, he had he and the coaching staff handled that situation so terribly um, that I, 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 I the details of it I don't want to get into because I'll just ramble on forever. Um, you had Casey Paha, you had uh, Trevon Boykin, you had Devontae Fields, you had four different players get in trouble for something. Is that Gary Patterson's fault? No, those guys made their own choices and moved on down the line, but he didn't handle all those situations, you know, with absolute judge dread, like, boom, you're guilty, you're gone. Every one of them got chances and moved through the system one way or the other. So, and I can, if you want to play this game for any university, we can do it. You know, tell me where you went. I'll find the stuff that bad happened there because it happens everywhere. And maybe just move past it because, you know, the old saying is you point one finger, you got four pointing back at yourself. That's kind of where you're sitting at, and that's the, co that's the business of college athletics. Yeah, uh, well, first of all, shout out to Coach McGuire for the helmet. We do appreciate that, Reckham. Uh, shout out to Dion as well for his little cameo there in the background uh, by the helmet. So shout out to Primetime. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly going back to the, the names that you rattled off there, uh, there was a stretch where TCU was finding as much trouble as anybody, but that school down south, as Gary Patterson deflected to, was just having more of the headlines, and so TCU didn't have much of a microscope on them, but they had their little run there during that same time period where they had plenty going on, and you just didn't probably hear about it nearly as much because of the differences in coverage. Um, and so they were very fortunate in that regard. As far as the Kendall Bryles thing goes, it, this this whole handling of it by TCU is just it's so laughable. Um, it's very clear what they're doing and trying to do, and everybody sees through it. Um, you know, most teams would have had a graphic out with Kendall Bryles, and he would have been photoshopped from like an Arkansas picture last year in a, you know a TCU vest and whatever else, and it would have said "Welcome K at whatever his Coach KB or whatever his Twitter handle is." And that's how most of them are. And I don't care enough to go through TCU's like hiring tweets to see how they handle it exactly every time but that's generally how it kind of goes never really ever do I think I've seen like the full-blown family portrait and no handle attached to it and that was intentional too and, and as it's been pointed out and yet if you look at the picture he's like the last person you notice because he's in the side and to the back 
uh, compared to the family who's like all up in the front of it. And it's just, it's just laughable um, because everybody knows exactly what they're doing here. Uh, everybody knows why there wasn't some big announcement yesterday. Everybody knows why there's a family portrait as opposed to, you know, just welcome Kendall. It's welcome Kendall Browse and family. And they can say that it's just the, the cordial thing to do, but we all know different TC. We all know better than that, than that. We all know what's going on. We all know that, you know, uh, people are going to have their opinions and that you don't really want to attract as many of those opinions, although that's, you know, seemingly impossible because even the tweet that didn't have the tag and didn't try to, you know, uh, use the usual algorithm that would, would get it even more seen, got seen by plenty of people because, you know, people were waiting for this to drop because of the way it was handled the last couple of days. But, yeah, I mean, I know there's plenty of TCU fans who have sworn off or say they're not going to care as much or they're upset about it or whatever. And, and to those people, kudos to you. Uh, to those who say, like, I don't care, just win football games. Every fan base has those people. Uh, and, and so, you know, do your thing as well, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to sit up here and say, like some other people, that Kendall Browse deserves this and he deserves that and all that. Because to me, this isn't about him. Uh, it re- For me, it isn't. It's about TCU's handling of this and just the way that it seemingly went down and just the hypocrisy of it all. That's what is, is, is the, the big thing to me, is just the hypocrisy uh, given the way – he was talked about and and others were talked about and now you look around and there's one school that has a, a growing number of, of those guys and it's just it happens to be the school that probably talked the most uh but people do change he's been around at a lot of spots like i said the other day and so as far as them hiring him you know just on the surface like i said a couple days ago okay good football coach good hire you know fills your your vacancy and it makes sense now, as far as like just the, the overall look of it, yeah, it seems dirty. It seems really dirty. It seems hypocritical, and I can see where some TCU fans would be upset by it. Well, he's at TCU. He and uh, the family, the picture, and there was a lot of countdown. How come you haven't sh- shown a picture? How come you haven't made it official? It's official now. People can think of it whatever they want moving forward. He is now the associate head coach, offensive coordinator, and quarterbacks coach at TCU and we'll see how this moves on I'll tell you what TCU did Uh, they took some blowback and they didn't let it affect their decision and that doesn't mean that they're any special or whatever but they did not allow that to affect the decision Sonny Dykes was committed to this he convinced the AD of it Uh, the university decided okay let's give this a shot and now Kendall Bryles is at TCU I mean, I give him credit for that, I guess, but it's also not necessarily admirable, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they didn't do what uh, the Cleveland Browns did and caved to the social media mob, so I do give them credit for that. Or they're the better, Hamilton Tiger They're better than gets. a CFL yeah. team who couldn't withstand probably, what, like 10 people tweeting at them or whatever it was. I mean, um, yeah, there's been professional organizations that caved under Twitter mentions. Uh, and so, yeah, kudos to TCU uh, for for not doing that, but um, you know, it, it's a, an interesting hire because of the back uh, back history, uh, and it's a, a good hire on paper. Is it worth all of the hoopla in the end? I think that's what we all really want to know, and that's what we'll, we'll all wait and see. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it's 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 not to me about them hiring Kendall Browse. It's just the whole backstory behind it that makes it so weird. And then yeah, the handling of it the past couple of days of like waiting on the graphic and then you finally see it this morning and it's like the full blown fan. Like, come on, dude. Like we know exactly what you're doing. Uh, social media team job. Well done, I guess. I guess that's what you had to do, but it just, it, it is pretty silly. A social media team that didn't make the hire that was told, okay, right. how can we try to at least soften the blow just a little bit now? On the same day that he is introduced officially with the graphic from TCU football, Michigan did not waste any time. They